So today we have the Jetson TK1 and the Z stereoscopic camera. So for people who are interested in using these two pieces of equipment, um, I realized that there wasn't much documentation online, so I thought I'd show uh, anyone who is interested in using this for their research or for their project, uh, what have you, that you could kind of get a performance evaluation uh, based on this video. So I just basically took this out of the box, set it up, wrote some, some code, um, and I'm just showing this so that you can get a rough idea of what you might be working with if you decide to use uh, these two platforms um, as part of your project. So I think the main performance uh, that we'd be looking for is how well does the depth map uh, exactly work um, and how good is the frame rate. Uh, so this in this test I'm going to be running the camera and do some rendering in real time so you can kind of see how that performs. And also we'll be measuring the frames per second. Here we go. So this is what it looks like in real time. So on the left I have my depth map. Looks pretty good. On the right, I have the RGB frame. Um, so this being a stereoscopic camera, we only really want um, to extract from one of those cameras uh, to render. So this is just the left camera. Um, you can see it's calibrated pretty well if I try to overlap them. So for instance, if you compare this region of the light with that one, you can kind of see that it overlaps pretty darn well. Uh, one thing I will say is that this is an indoor lab, um, and it does have sort of a... Uh, hey, look, it's me. Um, it has a limited range, so if I put my hand closer than about three feet, uh, you will see some distortion in the edge map. Or, sorry, in the depth map, I should say. There you go. So, ideally, this, this works best at um, three feet or further. I believe that the specification says that it can go up to... Um, say about 100 feet. I haven't really measured that yet, uh, but you can see the wall back there. That's about I don't know 25 feet or so and It does reach in the back there now I realize that I do have some compression to try to run this um, In real time. So this is running at 720p And I have the frame rate recorded here so you can see it drops to just about 4.4 frames per second on average, roughly about that. Uh, not very fast, um, so that's why I kind of wanted to show this so you know uh, what kind of uh, what kind of metrics you get, what kind of performance you'll get out of the box. Um, I also ran some tests on it to verify that the camera indeed outputs 15 frames per second. Oh, so as now, uh, as of now, um, the last update on the source, or the source developer kit, has a limitation capped at 15 frames per second from the USB 3.0, so the 3.0 hub running to the camera. And I confirmed that it is indeed uh, transferring about 15 frames per second directly from the camera to the board. Now, of course, if you're rendering stuff, um, your frame rate is going to drop, so we see that here. Okay, that's all I really wanted to show you. So, again, I just wanted to show this in case anyone else wanted to use these two platforms in their research um, so that you would kind of get a better idea um, of what kind of stuff you might be working with and, and how it might perform. So, thank you.